Hi, this is Lance Culver, and this is going to be a tie flow tutorial. This video is part of a series I've uploaded on creating a vehicle rig with tie binds. In the previous video, I demonstrated how to add shock absorbers to a rig. If you haven't seen that video, you might want to follow the link that's on the screen now and check that out first, or see the description below. But this video will cover adding the coil spring to the struts and completing the effect of the shocks. This is super easy and will only take a few minutes to set up, and the results are really good for the minimal effort that goes into the setup. Okay, so I have the model, it's rigged, all the mechanics function correctly, which makes for a pretty convincing effect in my opinion, but this needs the coils, and that can totally be set up in Typeflow. However, in the context of a larger simulation, let's say with a more complicated rig, it's doable, but there's another way, one that looks just as good, but will not increase simulation times at all, and it's actually way easier to set up. It's a better solution, so let me show you. You can see this is exactly where we left off in the previous video. I'm going to select these items here and isolate selection. I want to create a box, make a copy. Okay, for this first box, I'm going to align it to this lower strut dummy and align the orientation of each axis. I'm going to do the same thing with this one, I'm going to align it to the upper strut dummy. And I'm going to change the gizmo to local. I'm going to slide this box down until it's right along the edge of this screw part, whatever this is called. Move this box to somewhere about there. Come over to helpers, select this drop down, come down to tie flow, and I'm going to create two tie binds. All right, for this first one, I'm going to align it to this box. For this second one, I'm going to align it to this box. For the upper object, I'm going to select the upper strut dummy. And for the lower object, I'm going to select this box. And then for this one, same thing, upper object, this lower strut dummy, and the lower bind object, this box. Select both of these tie binds and add a tie bind settings. And under the twist settings, enable the limits, and that will prevent any movement in these binds. Go ahead and reduce the size of this and shut off this icon. Next, select each of these boxes, add a tie properties. Alright, I'm going to add a channel, spring, dummies, I'll just leave the value at 1. Now I'll select the tie actor and add these new tie binds. Next, select tie flow, open editor. Okay, first thing is add a property test. And I'm going to change the test type to custom float. And it'll test true if it equals one channel spring dummies. Isolate. Okay, you can see the two new particles here. Place them on their own simulation group. We'll just say eight. Rename this event spring dummies. All right, I'm going to add a physics shape and a physics bind. All right, for the bind, I'm going to change it to tie actor binds. All right now, so that's pretty much all we had to do there. You can see that these particles are, they're sticking right where they should go and they'll stay there. All right. So next I'm going to add a display data. 
So this particle has birth ID 41 and this one has birth ID 42. Next I'm going to go to create down to helpers and create a dummy. Make a copy of that. Come over here to the animation tab and then here under assign controllers, select transform, click this little check mark, assign a type particle controller. And here select a type flow. Change this from 0 to 41. And you'll see that dummy just jump right there. And it'll remain locked on that particle for the duration of the animation. Next, I'm going to select this dummy, same thing. Under Assign Controllers, select Transform. Assign a Tie Particle Controller. Select Tie Flow and then change particle ID to 42. Okay, let's go ahead and shut off that display. Come up to create, dynamics, and then spring. And then right here at the beginning, at the top here where it says endpoint method, we're gonna choose bound to object pivots. And then for the top binding object, I'm going to select this upper dummy. And then for the bottom, I'm going to select this lower one. So let's just increase some of this. Reduce the diameter. So we're going to reduce the diameter of the wire. Maybe reduce this overall diameter a little bit more. Increase the turns. Increase the turns a little bit more. If you need to adjust the position of the spring, so come over and select the tie bind and the box. Anyway, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch the video. As always, if there was any problems, if you're not getting the expected results, please leave a comment. Be sure to check back here pretty soon, probably in the next video or two. I'm gonna show you how to create a little bit of deformation in these tires. If you like the video, please hit the like button. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. Until next time, I hope you have a great day. Take care, thanks again, and we'll see you.